Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring all of you guys an identification video on Jack in the Pulpit. Jack in the Pulpit is a very commonly found plant this time of year, especially while you're out morel hunting. This plant loves to grow in moist woodlands that you're probably going to be finding all of your morels in. As we can see here, this plant has a very unique shape to it, and there's more than just one plant here. This is one plant, that is one plant, and we can see a couple more individual plants coming up here. But right now, let's take a close look at the identification features of Jack in the Pulpit, so that way you guys know what you're getting yourselves into when you see this plant. Now as we can see when Jack in the Pulpit is growing at this stage, we're going to notice a trifoliate leaf pattern. Each one of these leaves is going to be ovate shaped and they're going to be smooth along the margins. We're also going to notice these very distinct veins that are running laterally to each other at sort of a 45 degree angle from the mid vein of each leaf. And as we can see on each one of these leaves, that is the case. The top of the leaf is going to be darker green versus the underside of the leaf, as we can see here, is going to be a little bit lighter and sort of a gray color in appearance. Each one of these leaves is going to converge at the top of the plant stem, just like we can see right here where they all converge and meet up. Here we can see the main stem of the plant, and then over here is the very top of what's known as the pulpit. So let's take a close look at the pulpit or the flower of Jack in the Pulpit. Now whenever we're looking at the pulpit of Jack in the Pulpit, this is technically and botanically known as a spathe. Inside of it, if we open up this top leaf, or this hood, we can actually see there's a spadix inside. The flowers are down there in the very bottom, and those kind of brownish red sort of little inflorescence that are at the very bottom. This is part of this plant's reproductive strategy, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. If we put the top of the hood back over, and we turn it back, we can see this very unique cup-like shape with this distinct hood over top. Whenever we're looking at the spadix of Jack in the Pulpit, we can notice these whiter striations with these purplish-brown tinging in between them. As this matures, it will actually turn more brown in appearance where these purple tinges are in between these white striations. Now after the plant is pollinated and it comes to fruit, it does produce a cluster of berries that some people confuse with ginseng berries. Plus, ginseng looks a lot more unique and has a palmate leaf structure versus a trifoliate leaf structure like Jack in the Pulpit. As we noticed earlier, here comes the sun, as we noticed earlier, the inside of that hood is going to be a purple color. You're going to have purple and green, and sometimes this can be brown in appearance as well. As we look inside, we can see the spadix right there coming up through the center, looking sort of phallic. And then down deeper, we can see all those little bitty inflorescences. I know this is difficult to see. I can't really get this to focus anymore just because of the depth of field of this plant. Jack in the Pulpit, as we can see, is a very unique plant, and it grows from what's called a corm. If we're looking inside, at the inside of the flower, all those little inflorescences attract its pollinators. It's pollinated by fungus gnats. The fungus gnats are attracted to the very rancid smell of the inflorescence inside of the spathe, and then they get trapped in because of this hood. On each flower, there is male and female inflorescences, or male and female flowers. The male flowers will usually die off before the females have had a chance to grow. This plant will grow from what's known as a corm. Spring beauty also grows from what's known as a corm. The corm of this plant is what's edible, however it requires extremely, extremely cautious preparation. <clears throat> All of the plant's parts are very high in oxalic acid and oxalate crystals. These will cause a deep burning sensation in the mouth and the throat and on the skin where the plant juice has gotten on your skin. This is a plant that's best observed from a distance, observe its uniqueness, and observe its beauty. This plant, as we can see, also likes to grow in clusters or groups or small colonies. 
Whenever they're coming up and they're very, very young, we're going to see just these three leaves that we can see back here. This makes some people confuse this plant with poison ivy because they both have a trifoliate leaf pattern. Poison ivy looks very, very different, and I have an identification video of poison ivy on my channel if you guys are interested. So let's take a look at some of the younger jack-in-the-pulpit plants and see what they look like in comparison to our more matured jack-in-the-pulpit plants right here. As we can see, this little bitty trifoliate guy coming up here, this is a young jack-in-the-pulpit. And this is what they look like as they're coming up, which I assume causes people to confuse this with poison ivy. As we can see, it looks very different, and the leaves wrap around the stem, and they come up in a folded sort of pattern. And as the plant matures over time, those leaves will spread out to look like the more mature ones we just took a look at. So as you guys can see, Jack in the Pulpit is a very easy plant to identify. It's extremely unique, and there isn't anything else like it in the eastern woodlands. Now this plant is native to the eastern woodlands, and it can be found all the way through Canada, on the eastern coast, all the way over towards the Mississippi River area, north up into Canada, all the way down through Florida. So if you live in the eastern United States, there's a good chance you're running across Jack in the Pulpit in the woods. So I hope this video has helped you guys learn how to identify Jack in the Pulpit. I hope you guys are safe when you're out foraging, and I hope you guys are staying safe with the coronavirus. If you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.